I come from like picking cherries in the summer as my summer job and seeing all these migrant workers, yeah. you know, listening to Vicente Fernandez all day in the fucking hot sun desde cinco de la mañana hasta las cuatro de la tarde. It's so crazy for me to all of a sudden be in a position where I'm working with these people that I used to always admire like all my fucking life. On this episode of Three Shots, Three Questions, we're with Latin hip hop artist, Max Gallo. His super mexa attitude combined with three ball rhythms and trap style lyrics are enough to get any crowd hype. And we find out how it all got started. Max, thank you for joining us on Three Shots, Three Questions. Thank you for having me, man. I've been overwhelmed with all the love and respect I've been getting ever since I came out to the Valley, so... I mean, it was just really cool to get your call. I'll tell you how the show goes. We're gonna take a shot of tequila. Okay. I'll ask you a question, and then we'll repeat that for questions two and three. All right, let's go. Hey, this is the first time that we're using these, uh, these eye shots. I feel, I feel like there's more than a shot in here, man. He doesn't know, but this is way more than one shot of tequila. Salud. Man, I just kind of want to start from the beginning. What is your background in music? I think it all started because my dad was in uh, regional Mexican bands when I, when I was young. He was a drummer, so I'd stand behind him and watch him drum. And eventually I kind of said, hey, I, can, I, can I jump on? Started teaching me, started learning how to play drums. Then eventually I played a little bit of keyboard and throughout like my childhood and all the way till I was like 18, 19, I always played in Mexican bands. Like Duranguense, I played banda, I was a drummer. Just from the music that I listened to, the way I picked up music was like, as long as someone's authentic with their own point of view, it's always gonna be like unique to a point where, you know, it holds some value to it, you know what I mean? So that mentality mixed with like, you know, just a million crazy situations that I've been in and having to use my, you know, de que la labia para salirme de un chingo de pedos is like, I mix that, I mix that attitude, you know what I mean, into the music and I think that's, it eventually comes out and that's, that's Max Gallo. When you play La Ola, dude, I think my face melted off. La Ola is a lot deeper than it might sound. Savani played me that beat. He says, hey, I got a beat and I think this, I think this is for you. And as soon as I hear those fucking dark ass chords, it just connected to me like this dark ass vibe. And I was like, Yo me fui una fiesta a las once de la noche. And then it goes to like the, you know, the peer pressure that everybody's saying, yeah, here, smoke this, drink that, take that. It's like, ya solo escuchaba, todos decían decir, aquí nadie más te va a ver. Like nobody's, gonna, like, nobody's watching you, go all out. And when Savani presented to me that, that beat, I was going through all this thing, you know, adapting to a new country and a new world. And I was just like, this is a fucking song. Como te lo dije el otro día, like Savani painted the picture. I don't know, I just interpreted the message. You're originally from Portland, Oregon. You live in Monterrey now. How did that happen? I don't, I don't, even, I don't even know. I'm first generation Mexican. My parents are from Jalisco, a little town called Colotlan, Jalisco. And a lot of people in that town, they go to the States to work like, uh, you know, harvest. Um, my dad had been going up to Oregon a lot since he was like 18. He met my mom on one of those trips, went back to work, basically saved the money, came back, got married and said, let's go. Like, you know, I got work out there. So we went to Oregon and I lived there throughout all my life. My, both my sisters were born out there in a town called the Dallas, Oregon, Hood River. That's where I grew up. Once I got older, once I was like 18, I moved out of the house, started hanging out with friends like in Portland. I moved out to Portland. You know, I was playing, in, I was playing drums and stuff and I was doing music after work. I was just kind of like living, I guess, a normal life, but I always knew like, I gotta do something with my music. And eventually, I get a call from, uh, from this guy. He was like, hey, do you do tribal music? And I didn't do tribal music. Like I was just fucking with just English stuff. And I, but I said, yeah, tribal is like this mixture of like tribal sounds with like electronic music. It was like, well, I got this band and uh, they're trying to remix one of their songs. This, it's a Norteño band into tribal. So I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, all right, send me something. I was like, I'm not home, give me an hour. I was home. I took an hour, I went and started listening to all these tribal beats. And I was like, I just jumped on it and I, and I made something, sent it to the guy and they're like, hey, they like it. You should come out to LA and work on this song with us. I was like, let's do it. Go out to LA, I worked on that song. I wrote this, the song for them. And I dove into the project. I fell in love with it during this process. I did a whole EP. I had a few couple performances. And then after that, nothing happened. But I had released one video called Sueltala. 
a year after I released that video, I get a message from Toy Selecta, who's from Monterrey. I knew a little bit about him. I didn't know all, all everything about this guy. I just knew that Toy Selecta was like in with Rival Monterrey. So I figured, a huevo, that kid, that's dope that he heard my music. He goes, I want to see what else you're doing with music. Let's meet up. I was like, all right, cool. We met up in LA. I showed him a few tracks that I was working on. This guy was like, you're a songwriter. Like he didn't just see like Gallote. He saw like, you're a songwriter. And I was like, okay. Like at the end of 2014, I went to Monterrey. I went to Mexico City, Toy showed me around, and I realized like how fucking rich the culture is out there and how much potential there is for like growth that I was like, I was like, I just want to come out here. Like, I just want to, you know, I want to get out of my comfort zone. I want to learn. Since I'm doing, I'm writing in Spanish, I was like, the only way I'm going to really write in Spanish is I just got to be there in the trenches. This guy's like a Jedi master, you know what I mean? He's like a Dr. Dre de Mexico and hip hop and Latin America. So I was like, I need to be there, bro. And he was like, come out. And that's how I landed in Monterrey. Talk about like one extreme to the next, man. I used to think I was really Mexican. In my house, I used to speak a lot of Spanish. And I was like, no, Mexico va a estar con madre. I, was like, I, I know Spanish, like I'm good, I'm Mexican. Then I get out there and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> like, I, I, like I think I fucked up. All of a sudden I find myself in this position, you know, like como ese niño inside is like, holy shit. Like this is the type of things you used to dream of, but it's already happening. I feel really excited because yeah, I'm in Mexico, I'm in Monterrey, but then I come to McAllen and I feel like I'm bridging a, a couple of things, you know what I mean? Like I'm bridging a message or a vibe or something and yeah. that feels really cool too. Yeah, let's get into question number three. We're hey. about to play some fucking chente hey. and I'm about to fucking like tear up and shit. Truth be told, these are like one and a half shots each one. You obviously have an ear for music and, and a way with words, man. Where, did, where do you think you hone that talent? I want to make sure that both sides of the border can connect with this fucking idea. That's why I put call me gallote. It was in Spanish. It used to be dime gallote. But I said, no, no, no. I'm lying to myself if I, if I do that shit. Call me gallote. Then I put a little bit of English in there. Now it's pocho. Now it's like, you can listen to that shit. You know what I'm saying? Now you can talk about the hook. Call me gallote. Dime gallote. And gallote is really just an attitude, a super mexa attitude. To me, it was like, I, I feel like I can, like my music could be a bridge of like, these both sides, you know what I'm saying? Call me gallote. Pa que te azote. Pa que te monte. Dímelo, dímelo, dímelo. Que rica tú te miras. A ver si tú te animas. Subele al radio un poco. Ahora se me vino al frente. No mire para atrás. Deja que le pique nomás. You know, I was listening to a lot of things from everywhere, but everyone's trying to be either too hard. I'm not cholo, bro. Like, I can be, I, can, I could go through hard ass situations, but I'm not cholo, that's not my vibe, you know what I mean? But I'm also, but like, it's like, but tampoco soy fresa, so it's like, how do I get this like, attitude? It's, all it is is an attitude, gallote is really an attitude, and I think it's an attitude that is, is in all of us. A lot of the lyrics that I use in gallote are like, de bolón pimpón, like that, that's a fucking thing that I don't say, but my uncle used to say it, to say, de bola. So I, I'm using these, all these like, words that I heard growing up into my lyrics just to give a certain like attitude. So there's a lot more to it than, than just like the gallote thing. And when people understand that, I think it could be a bigger thing. Ladies and gentlemen, three shots, three questions, Maximo Gallote. Call me Gallote. Pa que te azote. Pa que te monte. Dímelo, dímelo, dímelo. Call me Gallote. Pa que te azote. Para que te monte, dímelo, 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 yo.